Hello everyone and welcome to Geopolitical Trends where truth matters. Is a war in West Asia inevitable? In a region already fraught with tension and conflict, recent developments have reignited fears of an escalating war. The killing of a Hezbollah commander, Fuad Shukr, and the assassination of Hamas leader, Ismail Haniya in Tehran have stirred the geopolitical pot, raising questions about the potential for further conflict and the negative role of the United States in this volatile region, as its influence is waning faster and faster. Aimed at these developments, United States Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin has emphasized the importance of diplomacy, striving to calm raising tensions and prevent another war. Yet, it was Austin who advocated for more tensions and escalation regarding the Ukraine-Russia conflict. I wonder what prompted him to support diplomacy in the Iran-Israel conflict, but not in the Russia-Ukraine one. Then the next question will be, what are the geopolitical implications of the recent escalation in West Asia? West Asia, known for its turmoil and shifting loyalties, has long been a theater of a complex and multifaceted conflict, often drawing in regional and global powers. The assassination of key figures like the Hezbollah commander Fuad Shukr and the Hamas political leader Ismail Haniya has escalated the already high-stake environment. Israel's assertion that the Hezbollah commander was behind a deadly strike in the Golan Heights and the subsequent killing of Haniya in Iran underscore the ongoing hostilities between these groups and the State of Israel. These targeted killings have significant implications. For Israel, they represent a continuation of its aggressive stance against groups it deemed or it deems as extreme or extremist organizations. For Hezbollah and Hamas, these actions are likely to be seen as provocations, potentially leading to retaliatory measures. One thing is sure, the involvement of Iran, a staunch supporters of both Hezbollah and Hamas, further complicates the situation, heightening the risk of a broader regional conflict. As an analyst, I argue that Israel's assassination of Ismail Haniya has no strategic value whatsoever. Then comes the position of the United States. In response to these developments, US Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin has reiterated his belief that a war in West Asia is not inevitable. Speaking to reporters during a recent visit to the Philippines, Austin emphasized the potential for diplomacy to defuse tensions and prevent further escalation. He stated, and I quote, I don't think a war is inevitable. I maintain that I think there is always room and opportunities for diplomacy." End of quote. His statement truly shows the U.S. double standards. Now, at least, we are now, or we know why we have become the laughing stock of the world. We say one thing and do another. Austin's remarks highlight the U.S. administration's preference for diplomatic solutions over military interventions. This stance reflects a broader understanding of the complexities involved in West Asia's geopolitics, where military actions often lead to unintended consequences and prolonged conflicts. The U.S. aims to use its influence to encourage dialogue and negotiations rather than being drawn into another war on behalf of its ally. But reality suggests otherwise, given how the United States' influence has been waning 
in the region and its global standing has deteriorated beyond belief. No one trusts the U.S. anymore. The risk of U.S. involvement, the possibility of the U.S. being dragged into another conflict in West Asia is significant concern. Historically, American involvement in the region has been marked by costly and protracted military engagements. From the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan to the ongoing conflicts in Syria and Yemen. Each of these interventions has had far-reaching consequences both for the countries involved and for the U.S. foreign policy, let alone the inability to win any conflict. Our humiliating departure from Afghanistan is a case in point. One of the main risks of the U.S. involvement in the potential for escalation, a military response to actions by Hezbollah or Hamas could lead to a broader conflict drawing in other regional or even global power such as Iran, Russia, or even China. This could destabilize the region further, leading to a humanitarian crisis and increased anti-American sentiments beyond what it already is today. Moreover, prolonged military engagements will strain U.S. resources and divert attention from other issues that matter, like crumbling infrastructure, fragmented education system, economic degradation, and broken tax system, among other major issues here in the U.S. The financial and human costs of war are substantial, and there is a growing recognition that diplomatic and economic tools can be more effective in achieving long-term stability and peace. Sadly, we have incompetent diplomats who can't advocate for such initiative given our militarized foreign policy. There is one thing good about the role of diplomacy. Diplomacy remains a crucial tool in navigating the complexities of the conflicts in West Asia. Effective diplomacy can help de-escalate tensions, build a trust among adversaries, and create frameworks for lasting peace. The U.S. is in no position to play or be an honest broker and is incapable of mediating between conflicting parties and fostering dialogue. I say leave that role to the Chinese given the competence they demonstrated. China succeeded in brokering a deal that involved the signing of a declaration by Palestinian factions in which they agreed to form a unity government. How about Iran, Saudi Arabia agreement, which China oversaw? Whoever thought. So when U.S. officials, including Secretary Austin, try to promote diplomatic solutions, these are nothing but a bravado because the U.S. lacks credibility. By no means, I am an advocate for engaging with the regional powers, supporting peace initiatives, and of course, leveraging international institutions to help mitigate the risk of conflict. Additionally, addressing the underlying issues that fuel tensions and violence, such as economic inequalities and political disenfranchisement, is essential for achieving sustainable peace. But it all starts with having credibility. Here is my conclusion for you because I like to keep this short and concise. The recent killings of key Hezbollah and Hamas leaders have reignited fears of a new conflict in West Asia, a region already marked by turmoil and instability. While these developments pose significant risks, the emphasis on diplomacy offers a glimmer of hope. We must continue to prioritize diplomatic efforts to prevent further escalation while promoting peace. The potential consequences 
of another war, war in West Asia are profound, not just for the region, but for global security and stability. As the situation evolves, the importance of maintaining open channels of communication and fostering mutual understanding cannot be overstated. The survival of our race depends on it. Please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. As always, remember, geopolitics impacts your daily life in more ways than one. Till next time. Thank you.